These are the new metal releases for September 20th, 2024. I have five albums to talk about. There will be a mix of genres as always. I have some brutal metalcore, a band that mixes post-punk, goth, and new wave with metal, a fun melodic rock band that sounds like the hair metal bands of the 80s, an album by a legendary guitar player that's filled with guest stars, and the return of one of the biggest bands from the new metal era of the 2000s. So with that being said, let me get into this. first album I have is from the band Kublai Khan, and the album is called Exhibition of Prowess. This is a metalcore band from Texas. They formed back in 2009, and this is their fifth studio album. This is a short album. It's only 23 minutes long, but it gets straight to the point in terms of its heaviness. This band has a sound similar to the metallic hardcore scene of the late 90s, with influences from bands such as All Out War and Hatebreed. Speaking of Hatebreed, uh, Jamie Josta does some vocals on a song called Hopeless Fate. And the opening track is called Supreme Ruler. This is a short 55 second track that begins with a spoken section and continues with some heavy pummeling stop start guitar riffs and some thick and heavy bass beats. This continues into a song called Darwinism, also very heavy and features the same stop start guitar riffs and some aggressive hardcore style vocals. The guitars sound very heavy, there are some isolated bass guitar parts, and this band likes to have parts of the song where the song stops in its entirety, gives the vocalist a chance to let out some brutal vocals, and then after this is a song called Cannibal, which has some slow and heavy pummeling guitar riffs. There's also a groove element of the sound because the guitar player adds in some harmonics here and there. The song has some tempo changes in addition to the stop-start nature of the guitar rhythms. There's a 46 second song called X, which is just a very fast paced, hardcore type of song. This goes into Theory of Mind, which has lots of feedback and a thicker sound. This one moves fairly slow, but it's kind of heavy. I like the sound of the bass guitar in this one, and they have some sounds in the background that gives the song a more layered sound. Later on, on the album, they have a song called A Hopeless Fate, and this one has Jamie Josta. This is one of the faster moving tracks and has some of the more technical guitar playing, I guess I would call it that. I also thought the drumming was very intense on this track and there are parts of the song where there is just drums, bass, and vocals. I like how this band is not afraid to let the guitar player just take a breather during songs and let the other instruments just come through. And you can hear Jamie Joss's vocals on the second verse of the song. But overall, it's a short album. It's very heavy, very brutal. It's the perfect album for lifting weights or doing some other type of exercise. My score is an 8 out of 10. I think if you like bands like Hatebreed or Code Orange, uh, this is the type of album you can get into. The next band I have is called Unto Others, and the name of the album is Never Neverland. This band is from Portland, Oregon. They started in 2017 under the name Idle Hands. But they had to change the name for legal reasons, and they changed it to Unto Others. This band mixes a sound that's like gothic or post-punk bands like The Cure, Joy Division, Bauhaus, with traditional heavy metal. I think they are very unique. This is the first time I have listened to uh, a band like this blend these two musical genres like so seamlessly. I know there are other bands that do it, but this was my first time hearing one of these types of bands. So this is their third uh, full-length album. The album has 17 tracks. It's about 50 minutes long. The album has two short instrumentals, and the songs have a length of about three or four minutes each. The opening track is called Butterfly. This sounds a lot like the post-punk bands of the 80s, especially with those like low-register vocals. The song has a little bit of heaviness in it. It reminded me of the band Killing Joke. They have a similar sound. The song has the thick bass guitar sound and some bright new wave sounding keyboards. You can also hear some harsh death growls in the background. They're used kind of sparingly though. Other times uh, the vocals remind me of either Peter Steele of Typo Negative or Glenn Danzig. And then the next song is called uh, Mama Likes the Door Closed. And this one shows off their more of their metal side. The opening guitar riff was like a mix of thrash metal and early Nirvana. The vocals reminded me of Glenn Danzig on this track. The next song is called Angel of the Night and this one has more of that post-punk sound. They use a lot of bass guitar and clean guitar tones. This song in particular reminded me of the band Sisters of Mercy. Towards the middle of the album, there's a song called Fame, and this has that post-punk sound like The Cure, but they also incorporated some heavy chugging guitar chords in the sound. 
After this, there's a song called When Kids Get Caught. This one has a sound closer to the early 80s, new wave, and a clean guitar tones with deep vocals. The album closes with a cover of the Ramones' Pet Cemetery, which is the perfect cover for this band. And I've always thought this particular song by the Ramones had a post-punk sound, but this band adds in some more keyboards and vocal layers. So I might even like uh, this song better than the original Ramones song. But overall, one of my favorite albums of the week. I would have done a f- full review of this had I known about this band earlier. My score is a 9 out of 10. Maybe my favorite album of the week and possibly the month. And that's how good it is. So we'll see what happens. The next album I have is from the band Eclipse. The name of the album is Megalomanium 2. And this is the sequel to their album Megalomanium from last year, which I had also reviewed back when it was released. This is their 11th full length album. And actually the third time I'm reviewing this band on my channel, I did a review of their album Wired back in 2021. And I reviewed the last one, Megalomanian Part 2 or Part 1, which was last year. But this band, Eclipse, is a Swedish hard rock band from Stockholm. They're fronted by Eric Martinson, who is someone I believe is much more popular in Europe than in the Americas. I had only learned about this band like three years ago when I reviewed their other album. The band plays melodic hard rock or AOR, but to my ears, they remind me a lot of 80s Bon Jovi. They write super catchy songs with big hooks and memorable choruses. The album has 11 songs. It's 39 minutes long. Most songs are about three minutes in length. The opening track is called Apocalypse Blues, and this is just a very 80s sounding song with a big chorus and lots of driving bass guitar rhythms. Next one is called The Spark, and the first few seconds of the song reminded me a lot of Bon Jovi's You Give Love a Bad Name. It had a vocal intro that reminded me of that, but afterwards it kind of goes into this techno dance type of sound, which wasn't really a Bon Jovi copy. This song also had a big chorus and was super catchy. Next one was called Fall Into My Knees. This was more of a guitar-oriented song and had a lot of melody. There was a song towards the middle of the album called Still My Hero, I guess I can call it a power ballad. It had a softer verse section. It was a very Bon Jovi sounding type of song, but more of that later 90s Bon Jovi sound. The lyrics of the song are very emotional. It seems to be about someone, I imagine either a mother or father, who has passed away and this person is reminiscing about all the things that this person had done for them in the past. So I like the lyrics of the song. After this is a song called Dive Into You, and this is a better example of a power ballad as it's softer than the previous song. But this one sounded much like the ballads of the 80s glam metal bands. Overall, the band is very consistent. I think their albums uh, mostly sound the same from one to the next. That's just my opinion. I know this band has lots of fans who have listened to all their albums. I think it's worthy of an 8 out of 10. It's just fun, melodic, hard rock. Songs are well-written and catchy, so I like it. Next is the Michael Schenker group with My Years with UFO. I don't really need to tell you who Michael Schenker is. He was with Scorpions on the first few albums. And then he went with the band UFO and he's pretty much been solo since the 80s. And he's had different variations of the same band under the same names. And I don't need to go into all of that. The album is, I guess I'll call it a covers album or re-recordings of classic UFO songs. And they all have guest stars with some members of Guns N' Roses such as Axl Rose slash and other big names like Jolyn Turner and a few others. I'll mention them as I go through some of the songs. I actually wanted to do a full review of this, but I never got a chance, plus the Nightwish album came out, so I had to do that first, but let's talk about some of the songs. Opening track is called Natural Thing, features Dee Snyder on vocals and Joel Hoekstra on guitar. This song has a sound that mixes hard rock with traditional rock and roll. I think Dee Snyder sounds just as good as he always has, And I like the heavy, distorted guitar tone on the song. One of their most well-known songs is Dr. Doctor. This is a song that gets played before every Iron Maiden concert. It's just a way to get the crowd ready. This version has Jolyn Turner on vocals and Carmine Apice on drums. If you've uh, never heard the song, it has a slow building instrumental part. And the song itself has a very bouncy, foot-stomping, rock and roll type of rhythm. And it's just a fun and catchy song. Next song is called Mother Mary. This one has Slash on guitar and Eric Gronwall on vocals. He was the previous vocalist of Skid Row, but he had recently left the band. 
This song had a straightforward hard rock sound from the 70s, and I thought it was more of a guitar jam type of song. I mentioned there was a song with Axl Rose, and that's called Love to Love. This was one of the longest songs. It's about seven and a half minutes, and it's almost like a progressive rock song. You don't hear Axl Rose sing until after about two minutes. The song is softer, more emotional, has lots of different instrumental sections, but to be honest, this was one of the weaker tracks, just because Axl Rose's vocals are not what they used to be. But one of my favorite songs from the album was Rock Bottom, and it features Kai Hansen from Halloween, and it's a long song, it's like 11 minutes, it's an extended jam session, and I really like this song. There are more songs in the album, I kind of wish I did a full review, but I'm going to wrap it up here. It's enjoyable, and I'll be honest with you, I was never the biggest fan of UFO, but I like some of the songs, I like some of the hits, I like the album Phenomenon, that's a good one, but... I'm going to give this one an 8 out of 10. I was going to go 8.5, but the Axl Rose song is going to bring it down a little bit. So, I don't know what you think of this. Let me know in the comments. Let me know if you're a fan of UFO or you're looking forward to this album. The last album I have is Seether with the Surface Seam so far. See, there is a South African band that was mixed in with the new metal bands of the 2000s, but I would consider them more of a post-grunge band. You can hear the Nirvana influence in their sound. And they're back with their first album in four years, and it's pretty good. I haven't listened to this band in a long time, but this sounds just like I remember them. So let's talk about this album. The album has 11 tracks. Its total runtime is 47 minutes, and each song is about four minutes long. The opening track is Judas Mind. This one has a little bit of everything. It has the distorted new metal style guitar riffs, has the more atmospheric, cleaner guitar tones. It has melodic vocals, as well as some harsh vocals in the second half of the song. And it was a pretty good opening track, very uh, representative of their sounds. They continue with a track called uh, Illusion. This continues with a signature sound, including some very intense screams in the second part of the song. The next song is called Beneath the Veil. This one has a sound that's a little bit more stripped down. The first two songs were very heavy, but this one had more of that post-grunge sound, so I enjoyed the song. It was much more melodic, a little bit more radio-friendly than the first two, but that didn't bother me at all, so I thought it was a good track. After this is a song called Semblance of Me. This is another one that had more of the, a laid-back vibe and a post-grunge sound. It reminded me a lot of the band Stained. It was also because it had a very emotional and self-reflective lyrics. And you can hear some very uh, heartfelt and aggressive screams in the second half of the song, and I like that part as well. The rest of the album has some pretty good songs. There's one song called Try to Heal, which shows off some of their heavier guitar riffs. I also like the track called Same Mistakes, which has some lyrics that are very relatable, talk about how people look at their past. Towards the end of the album, they have a track called Dead on the Vine, one of their heavier songs, and you can hear it in the thick guitar riffs. Uh, overall... I like this album a lot. It reminded me a lot of Stain's Confession of the Fallen album from last year. It has a lot of emotional lyrics, a mix of their signature sound that blends the heaviness of new metal with cleaner atmospheric alternative rock sounds of the 2000s. I'm going to give this one an 8.5 out of 10. Another album I wanted to do a full review of, but it was a packed weekend and I didn't have time. So let's uh, wrap this up. So that is all. Check out last week's episode of the new meta releases of September 13th. Thanks for watching. Please give this video a like. It helps me with the YouTube algorithm. Please subscribe if you're not already. I do rock and metal reviews. I do rankings. I do tier lists. I do classic album reviews. I have memberships on my channel. If you want to check that out, you can make requests and you can get early access to my videos. So I'll see you in the next one.